Hello and welcome to Impact Leaders, a series where we talk to one of our community partners or impact partners. We talk to them about the community they work in and the kind of impact the money that you have invested in will have in those communities. Today we are joined by a very special guest, Nidhi Arora, the co-founder and executive director of Dhriti, The Courage Within. Dhriti was founded in 2004 and is a non-profit organization working for the promotion of entrepreneurship across the country. Thank you, Nidhi, for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, Dola. And I'm also very, very excited to be here and uh, to be on this journey with Rangde. It's also uh, uh, amongst the many firsts for us in this journey of entrepreneurship that started 16 years back. So Dhriti is a 16-year-old organization um, me and um, Anirban and Arindam, we, we co-founded it in uh, 2004, right after our uh, colleges and when we actually uh, felt that uh, uh, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial models were probably the answer to a lot of uh, issues that our country faced. And we also believed a lot in the power of uh, entrepreneurship, uh, especially amongst young people and uh, you know, uh, communities taking up entrepreneurship as a way to, uh, you know, be a part of the solution. So that's how the organization sort of came about. And uh, for us, it was very, very important that we, uh, you know, we, we do what we are preaching. We, are, we just, just don't go out there and tell people to do it. So we've had our own entrepreneurship projects, which have now been uh, you know, converted or uh, have reached a stage where they now function as full-fledged for-profit entities. So we've tasted the, the pains and pleasures of entrepreneurship ourselves. Uh, and then, of course, in this journey, worked with uh, many, many, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, many people who have been uh, uh, running enterprises and sort of with our uh, support have been able to scale up and a lot of people who had uh, not imagined that entrepreneurship was an option at all have been able to explore entrepreneurship as an option and uh, I also want to add that when we started in 2004 entrepreneurship was not a word at all you know there was uh, there was no understanding of what it meant uh, there was there was no cause around entrepreneurship nobody wanted to uh, you know, spend time, energy, resources in building uh, entrepreneurs or building a culture of entrepreneurship. We ourselves as an organization, as a young organization, face many challenges to just convince, uh, you know, people that it's, it's something worth doing. So I think from that uh, age and day to today in 2021, I think entrepreneurship, the world itself has evolved and uh, there is a lot more belief uh, in the power of entrepreneurship and uh, I think uh, what we are doing together as Rangde and Driti and many other partners on board is also uh, you know just an evidence of that uh, belief that we all have. As I understand the partnership uh, the current partnership we are uh, you know raising funds for women entrepreneurs from the northeast so if you could just take us through uh, you know the demography uh, the kind of businesses that these uh, women are involved in? So Northeast has been, uh, as a region, is very, very close to our hearts and has been a region that we have sta we started working in right in the beginning. So from 2004, Dhriti has been present in, uh, in that region. And uh, when we started, we realized that uh, though the region has immense amount of potential, both in terms of, you know, just people and resources and uh, you know, it, it has all the right things going for it, but there is still the, the, that region uh, does not get the kind of support that, you know, some of the other regions get. Uh, and some of the opportunities that are available in the other parts of the country are not available in that region. So uh, it just made sense to be there, present there. And uh, that's how our journey began. And over the past uh, few years, we have concentrated a lot on... Uh, uh, supporting women entrepreneurs in the Northeast region. And uh, resilience is a part of the culture of that region, you know. So, so people in general, much, much more resilient than probably some of the other communities. And women in general are more resilient. So, you know, when it's women from the Northeast, I think it's, it's you know, resilience to the power of infinity. And when we started working there, we realized that there is resilience, there are ideas, there is an intention to do things, but 
the right kind of support is just not reaching definitely not reaching the women entrepreneurs there are some programs some schemes available but the right kind of information is not there the uh, right kind of uh, 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 programs designed for supporting the uh, or uh, or uh, responding to the needs of the women in the northeast are not there uh, so it's a lot of you know picking up models from somewhere else and trying to offer it to that region to the women entrepreneurs of that region that is that was happening and that's how driti sort of saw its role there so uh, a lot of women entrepreneurs in the northeast come from uh, uh, you know a, a specific set of sectors so you will see a lot of entrepreneurs in food processing you will see a lot of entrepreneurs in food processing and agro uh, related uh industries you will see a lot of entrepreneurs in hand looms and handicrafts because again weaving and a lot of handicrafts is a very integral part of the culture uh and uh you know so travel is another uh, area although it's small but that's another area we where you will see some women so a lot of women are concentrated in these uh, sectors and a lot of women that we work with are also concentrated in these sectors but then we also see uh, some uh, innovative models we also see some women who were trying to break the barriers we have women who are working on you know wood based industries where no women have sort of ventured uh, one of our entrepreneurs is probably the first one in the region we have a woman entrepreneur who's running a gym so we also see those kind of models um, existing uh, but yes they are few uh, they they are the ones who are trying to break the stereotypes uh but a lot of them uh, are concentrated in uh, you know uh, probably i would say are leveraging the resources that are existing that are that are available in the region in plenty and building their businesses on that what kind of value do you see this partnership bringing in uh, between driti and rangdev what kind of uh, you know value can this add to the uh, women entrepreneurs of northeast uh, firstly there's a lot of value in this partnership i think uh, uh, it's it's one of those things which i feel has uh, a lot of potential and it's also uh, attacking the problem you know right at its core so an organization like driti uh, which works in building capacities of the women entrepreneurs does not believe in quick fix solutions but really works at the you know at the core and rangde which is uh, which has a proven record i think of coming up with an innovative approach to uh, financing small businesses you know it's uh, i think those two elements coming together for northeast women entrepreneurs is really going to make a difference uh, firstly because uh, moving from informal to formal is not just about uh, the availability of formal sources of finance it's a huge mindset issue it's a huge preparedness issue and this partnership we see as a as a wonderful way of helping women move from you know just informal sources of finance which sometimes are also very exploitative uh, also very unreliable uh, in various ways and comes with their own kinds of strings attached uh, moving from that kind of a, a financing model to a more this is a this is a purely formal financing model but yet it it's not as i was talking yesterday also uh for the rise up campaign that uh, it's not as scary you know it it is there is uh, uh less uh sort of nervousness about getting into a model like this because it's it's you know they can they can riti team is around they can they know there are individuals who are investing in their businesses so uh, it's it's the in a way easing uh them into the formal uh financing world uh in a very very uh, comfortable way rather than just imposing uh, uh you know uh, something which is uh, uh, which is large which is difficult to you know maneuver kind of a, a setting for them so that's that's one uh, benefit the other benefit is that when you when you are in, a, in operating in an informal uh, structure there is no credit history so a lot of women entrepreneurs are not able to provide a credit history because though they have taken uh, money before they, there's no obviously uh, any sort of formal uh, you know paperwork to it so it also helps you build your credit history it helps you build that case for future financing it also helps you understand how you know uh, how you take money invest it in your business in the right place so that you're able to repay it. there's a there's a discipline so a lot of this comes into place and 
uh, and at the same time, it's a peer-to-peer -peer lending model. We are talking about a model that is, as far as my understanding of women entrepreneurs goes, it's a model that should ideally work better with women entrepreneurs because women entrepreneurs do uh, uh, operate. Uh, you know, they are they are more invested in relationships. Now they will not come, get into a transaction purely for the money and come out. They are more likely to enjoy the fact that they know who's at the other end. You know, they will like it if uh, the person who's, the, who's at the other end is also, uh, you know, caring about the business as much he or she is caring about the money that he or she has put in. So there is that human angle to the whole model and it's not purely money. And, uh, and, and speaking on behalf of the women entrepreneurs of Northeast, I think there, are, there is one great thing about entrepreneurs in that region is that social impact I think is embedded in the thinking there. So it doesn't, you don't have to start a social enterprise to have a social impact. Every enterprise that operates in the Northeast, definitely the ones that led by women, have a community perspective, have a cultural perspective, have, you know, they, they, they're wanting to uphold the values of that region. So if one is investing in a business led by a woman entrepreneur in the Northeast, you are automatically guaranteeing some kind of social impact. So I think that's where uh, this partnership is going to be really valuable. And I, I definitely see a lot of potential in this growing into, you know, future financing, cub mentoring model, and also uh, uh, helping the whole world understand the requirements of the region and how, uh, you know, we can contribute, we can engage in the development process of the region. Uh, Nithin, give us a sense of the cre traditional credit access or traditional credit availability for uh, these entrepreneurs. Firstly, the size of businesses, women-led businesses is small and so the credit requirements are also, or the fund requirements are also small. And so far, women have largely been using traditional means to uh, access finance. Although that itself is, so accessing formal finance is itself a very small percentage of you know, what, uh, 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 the way the businesses are, women-led businesses are financed in, in the Northeast. A lot of women still rely on informal sources. And within the formal sources, it would be a lot of loans um, and government schemes that they would rely on. Uh, accessing formal finance is a challenge. Information is a challenge. And then the next level of challenge is the compliances that are needed to be able to access any formal source of finance, which a lot of uh, women-led businesses struggle with. So since some of this basic groundwork is not in place, uh, uh, even if the funds are available, so it's the, the issue is on both the sides, but um, uh, it, because there is the, the preparedness is not enough, whatever is available is also not accessed to its full, its full potential. Could you take us through the process of due diligence and also um, how was the process of, you know, really making these women understand uh, this new new age terminology, if uh, one may say so, peer-to-peer -peer lending and uh, what kind of, uh, you know, benefits they could have, what kind of risk it entails, uh, how did you explain it all to them? So, yes, due diligence, I mean, the whole process, I think, firstly, just explaining to them that it's not it's not cut and dry it's not about uh, filling up an application submitting it to you don't know who and then and getting rejected and you don't know why you know so it's not a model that works like that it is not about rejection it is it, we are trying to eliminate the biases that usually come into the process so there was a lot of conversation and a lot of comfort uh, building around this aspect, you know, that, and also the communication around the fact that uh, it's not the last chance. So it's possible that an entrepreneur is not prepared at this point of time to go up there on the portal and start raising money because you are not able to, you know, get the paperwork, the basic paperwork that's needed or, you know, the, the, the basic preparation is not there. But that doesn't mean that the door is closed forever. You know, it only means that, you know, you can now. Uh, sort of, you know the gaps, so you can start working on those gaps. And as an organization for Dhriti also, it's, you know, it, it helps us because it then tells us, okay, these are where the common gaps are and these, this is where we can start focusing immediately so that more and more women are able to access this model. So some of those things, but also uh, uh, 
from some of the initial uh, uh, experiences that we've had, five women have already been able to raise uh, money from the uh, portal. And we hadn't expected, frankly, that it would be so quick and so smooth. Uh, even though we, we, were, we were totally sort of part of the process right from the beginning, but we were also sort of, you know, watching the, you know, how much time, what are the challenges that will come up when they actually go up live and, you know, uh, uh, actually start raising the money and some of them have started repaying it. So, you know, it's, it just talks a lot about uh, uh, some of the hurdles that probably the model has already been able to eliminate. If we have been able to, uh, uh, if women have been able to raise money and have, you know, uh, utilized that money and have started repaying it, it's definitely an indicator of some sort of easing out and some sort of, you know, de-complexing uh, the system that uh, the model has been able to do. And uh, I am I'm really looking forward to a lot more women coming on the uh, platform as quickly as possible. And what is the kind of ticket size are we looking at on an average for uh, these women entrepreneurs? I know currently that a lot of women are operating at that one lakh kind mm -hmm. of, there's one person who uh, has, uh, you know, who's operating at the five lakh requirement right. kind of level. But the others are, are at a very, very small ticket size and uh, towards the earlier part of the range of 50,000 to uh, five lakhs. And that's also because, like I said in the beginning, these are small businesses with small fund requirements. And uh, also probably a little cautious in terms of, you know, women are cautious borrowers and very sincere repayers, you know, in general, that's what stats says. So uh, they will not, just because it's available, they're not going to uh, raise it. Uh, so the ticket sizes are smaller, but we also feel that being able to borrow and being able to repay will give a lot of confidence to not just the women who've actually been able to borrow and repay, but to the others as well. Thank you so much, Nidhi, for all the insights. I think that would really help us in, you know, help our social investors in understanding the kind of community they are looking to invest in and also the kind of work you guys are doing, the incredible work that you are doing to support them. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.